But I wanna be free, yeah. God, I need to be free. Go get it. A soul tie develops in a season when when your soul, watch this, is out of balance spiritually. You develop soul ties. You develop a dysfunctional soul when you are out of balance spiritually. See, when you're in balance spiritually, you love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, meaning that there's no internal part of you that God does not occupy. So there's nobody to attach themselves to you unless they come through a godly connection. Did you catch that? God says, the first commandment is to love me with all. And the second is that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if we fulfill the first commandment to love God with all heart, soul, mind, it means that there is now the spiritual balance, that there is no room for anybody that is not of God to attach themselves to you. Because when you love God with all, it means that now all of your relationships are uh, strained through your love for God. So there can be no ungodly attachments when we love God with all. The only reason we develop these ungodly attachments is because we have not loved God completely. You know, okay, let me, can I just get real with you for a minute? Can I just be real with you for a minute? What is the difference between me now Hey, hello, Bishop Blakes, man, you, you got so cool. I just know you had a Cadillac with a diamond. I did have a Cadillac one day. I really did. Yeah. Didn't have a diamond in the back, but I had the gangster lean. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some of y'all going to tell your age if you respond to that one. But watch this. What's the difference between me now as a man versus me back in the day, decades ago, when I was chasing every skirt that was swinging in the wind? is that back then I was spiritually out of balance. God was not fully, I was not fully occupied or preoccupied with God. Therefore, there was always room for my flesh to entertain my soul and to send me in directions that I had no business going in. Are women still beautiful? They're actually more beautiful today than they've ever been. Do I run behind women? Absolutely not. I run home to my wife. What is the difference? The difference is that all of my relationships now are, are funneled through my initial and primary love for God. And when you have soul ties, it is a sign that there is a spiritual imbalance. Because man is a what? Three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is the divine part that's connected to God. The soul is the mind, the intellect, the will, the emotions, place of choice or decision making. Uh, you know, basically your soul is your personality. Soul is the part of man which enables him to live practically in this world. And then the body is the house in which the other two, the spirit and the soul, live and provides the means whereby the spirit and soul express themselves. You see, the body is basically the servant of the one that is most dominant. If your spirit man that is connected to God is most dominant, which is the divine balance, then your spirit dictates to your soul and your soul to your body. Your body is going to serve the part of you that is most dominant. So if, you're, if your carnal mind, your soul is in control of the situation, it means that you're going to be carried away with every wind that blows. But when your spirit is in full control, then you, you eliminate the dysfunction because you bring about the divine balance that God intends for you. When the soul is sick, the individual's life is poisoned. When your soul is sick, your, your life is poison. Nothing works for you. Look how Proverbs 4.23 in the Message Bible reads, Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. That's, that's, that's the Message Bible, Proverbs 4.23. He says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. But that's where life starts. The term heart speaks of the immaterial part of your being. 
your inner man. Keep vigilant watch. You know, you, you really don't have to watch over your spirit because the Holy Spirit watches over your spirit. He's, he's, he's resident in there. The part of you that you have to watch over is your soul. That's why the Bible says you need pastors that would watch for your souls. This is the part that needs to be watched because this is the part that has a tendency to entertain Satan and flesh and ungodliness. It's not your born again spirit. So, you know, while we making up and, and exercising, which is all, all good to do and cutting hair and braiding and, 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 and doing eyebrows and putting on lashes and all that kind of stuff. What have you, what have you done for your soul lately? Have you, have you cared for your soul as much as you've cared for your skin? Life doesn't start in your skin, babe. Doesn't start in your hair. It starts in your soul. Now, a dysfunctional soul is a soul that is disconnected from the influence of the Holy Spirit and is governed by its own whims. Let me read that for you one more time. Y'all think we can get, get, I need, I know you want some more people in here. You think we can get some more people in here? A dysfunctional soul is a soul that is disconnected from the influence of the Holy Spirit and is governed by its own whims. Now, let me ask a question. Do you honestly think that me as a man in my natural flesh, do you think that uh, those same thoughts that used to dominate my life many, many years ago, got to say that because, you know, people saw rumors. Do you think those thoughts that dominated my life many years ago, do you think they're gone? Do you think my flesh has gotten saved and my flesh does not still want what it used to want? Do you think my flesh does not try to drag me, would not like rather to drag me back to where I used to be? It is no longer dysfunctional. A dysfunctional soul is a soul that is disconnected from the influence of the Holy Spirit and is governed by its own whims. I am no longer governed by the whims of my flesh. I am governed by the Holy Spirit. It's the only reason. I was sharing with the church today. It's amazing to me how I have the history and the past that I have. And I have so many women of God all across the country that love me as a father. That's amazing. But that's what can happen for you when you, when you, bring, when you bring the balance to your inner man. See, you can't you can't turn homie loose because you still not balanced spiritually. You still got your soul running the show when you allow the Holy Spirit to take over the show and your spirit man begins to dictate to your soul and your soul to your body. It is then that you're going to find all of that stuff purged out of your consciousness. All right, watch this. Now, the dysfunctional soul is carnal and is ruled by its own desires. And when we use the word carnality, um, it speaks of everything in man that is not under the control or dominion of the Holy Spirit. Any decisions you make that are not dictated by the Holy Spirit or are not under the influence or dominion of God is carnality. There are some of you all that stood up in church today, called yourself leading worship, and you were strictly in the flesh. It wasn't nothing but carnality. You wasn't doing nothing but entertaining. <laughs> trying to impress people and all that. You wasn't in the spirit. You was just straight in your flesh and nobody was moved. The glory didn't show up because you, you was, you was carnal. They're preachers today. They preached today. They were strictly in their flesh. I love you too. When y'all tell me y'all, you all have chosen me as your spiritual father. I don't take that lightly. That means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. Now watch this. The soul must be protected constantly. I have to protect my soul. I can't just let my mind go. I can't. I have to protect my soul. I have to. I have to make certain that I guard this mind. You know why I gotta guard this mind? Cause I know this mind. I'm unlike a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all know everybody else's business, but you need to discover your own. You a mess and don't even know it. That's why you keep falling into situations and talking about. Oops, I don't know how I got into that. It's cause you don't know yourself. The soul has to be protected constantly. Man, there's certain places I can't go. Certain people I can't be around. Mm -mm. 
I have to have people with me when I go a certain place. And I no, 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 I don't trust my flesh. I'm like Paul. There, I, there's no good thing in this flesh. I don't trust it. I say, I say, I say, I say, I do not trust my flesh. And I have to protect this mind. I have, when thoughts come in, I have to pull them down immediately. When my eyes go to looking and, and, and I got to, you feel what I'm saying, homie? You know, you, you gotta, you gotta protect your soul. There are too many of you all that are allowing too many people to speak into your life. You're rolling up and down the street with people that are doing nothing. I was just sharing with a young man the other day. Man, if you want to save your family and your marriage, you gotta stop running with these dogs. You're running with dogs. I'm looking on the, on the social media, looking at your pictures and your friends. All those are dogs. Every one of your friends, you got to get rid of these dogs. You ain't going to save your family and your marriage running with these dogs. You got to protect your soul. Look what 1 Peter 2 and 11 says. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. What does that say to you? Just because you saved, babe. Don't mean that you're beyond the temptations of your flesh. Your flesh is not saved. Now, watch this. An unholy soul tie, I'm laying some foundation here, disrupts the divine balance of your life. It makes, it makes you, watch this, when you have an ungodly soul tie, a relationship that Satan introduced into your life that was not sanctioned or ordained of God, it makes you irrational. It makes you rebellious to God's will, and it and it drives you emotionally. When women, for instance, um, in in the fellowship in in the church that I physically passed, in the ministry that I physically passed, when they want to go off, on, you know, running behind the soul tie, they kind of disconnect from me. They pull back so as to not have too much contact with me because they don't want me to ask too many questions because soul ties, ungodly soul ties will make you rebellious. It'll make you irrational and it drives you emotionally. Somebody needs to hear this. That's why the enemy is disrupting the connection. Well, the devil is alive. We're going to get it out one way or the other. Look what First Thessalonians. Well, let me read this first. Here, here's, here's an impact point. Um, the healthy soul is submitted. Here's, 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 here's a glimpse of the healthy soul. The healthy soul is submitted to the will of God intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally. Your whole mind has to be submitted to the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, In the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly or entirely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Everything has to be submitted to the will of God. There is no such thing as a healthy soul apart from submitting that soul to the word of God. Let me read that one more time. There is no such thing as a healthy soul apart from that soul or that person's mind being submitted to the word of God. This is why it is so imperative to find yourself a teaching priest. I forget where it's at, but the scripture says Israel went without the true and living God because there was no teaching priest. Baby, all this running behind all this emotionalism and all this screaming and hollering and jumping around and sweating and nobody said anything and no revelation was dispensed. The, that day is over. You got to find yourself in a place where somebody is breaking this word down and you are digesting this word and you are leaving away saying, man, you cannot you cannot purge your soul. I saw something about husband and wife praying together. You cannot purge your soul without the word of God. This is why in churches where you have all of this singing and we got the, one of the best bands, one of the best worship teams, if not the best, in my opinion, in the country. We believe in singing. Trust me, we do. But, baby, we fully understand that people got to have the word. You go to these churches where they got excellent choirs and preachers just hollering. They sound like a mockingbird, but he ain't teaching the word. People living in all kinds of sin. They got all kinds of shackles on them because you can't purge this stuff out of your life. But by the word of God.
And you got to understand that word. Now, I'm not got to say this to you preachers. Some of y'all screaming entirely too much. People can't even benefit from what you're doing. You just screaming and hollering, and I ain't hating on you if you're a hooper. Hooping is a wonderful thing. I love it. I love hearing people do it. But don't go to hollering through the whole message. Teach me something. Then you can holler all you want. If you holler too long, of course, I'm going to leave my offering and leave you up in there. But, you know, get your little hollering every now and then. But, but teach me the word. You got to have, look what the Bible says. In James 1.21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, watch this, which is able to save your souls. The engrafted, implanted word, which is able to save your souls. You got to have the word. See, there's no such thing as a healthy soul apart from a soul submitted to the word of God. Now, look what Hebrews 4, 12 and 13 says. For the word of God is quick. And this is just foundation. I'm about to get into the, the heart of the message. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any, any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow and as a discerner. So the word brings a distinction between the soul, the spirit and the flesh. And look what else it says. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Most people don't want to go to church where the word of God is really taught. Because most people don't want to be stripped naked spiritually. The word of God is like a mirror. It undresses you, then it shines. It puts a mirror in your face for you to see your true condition. There is no such thing as a healthy soul apart from a soul that is submitted to the word of God. Dr. Ballard. Thank you, Doc. I'm so glad to have him on. And Dr. Ballard is going to do... Uh, put the title up, put the put the topic of your, 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 your session that you're going to do during swim, Doc. Put it up there for people in bold letters so they can see it and at the same time follow you. <clears throat> now, here, here's some signs that your soul is dysfunctional. Here's some signs that your soul is dysfunctional. You know that your soul is dysfunctional. Because some of y'all sitting there trying to act like you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm, look, <laughs> I'm looking at some of them dropping off. They don't want to hear this. But see, this is why you're in the mess you're in. Because you don't want to hear no truth. <laughs> you don't want to hear no truth. But the Holy Ghost is going to get you. You got to come back and watch the replay. Because I am already planted enough seed in you. that You ain't going to be able to leave this, babe. The Holy Ghost will convict you. Signs that you have finding your sermon. Oh, y'all made it go too fast. Send it again, Doc. When Number one. Signs of an un, of 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 uh, what I call it a dysfunctional soul. When you decide, when you make a decision to move away from the known will of God, you know your soul is un, you know your soul is unhealthy, and you know your soul is dysfunctional. When you can sit up there and concoct in your mind that I am going to disobey God on this day with this person at this place. You know your soul is dysfunctional. When you get in a relationship with a man that the Holy Spirit told you when you first met the man, this man is not for you. This man is not of God. And your flesh wanted him so bad you ignored the Holy Spirit. You muted the Holy Spirit and did what you wanted to do. You know your soul is dysfunctional. That's how some of y'all sat in the Lord's house today and didn't tithe. You was in the mall buying red bottoms yesterday and sat your happy self right up in God's house and didn't even tithe. Didn't go up there with that little offering. Your soul is dysfunctional. When you can decide, make a decision to move away from the known will of God, your soul is dysfunctional. Do you know how much it takes for you to sin and to fall? The Holy Spirit is working against uh, your falling. The word of God is working against your falling. Your conscience is working. You got to have a seriously sick soul to just know the will of God and just ignore him. And yet you are the child of God. You're just carnal. Look what Romans 8, 6, uh, 3 says. For to be carnally minded is death. 
But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity. That word means at war against God. Your carnal mind is fighting the things of God. And the reason you can go against the known will of God in your life is because your carnal mind is running the show. God is not Lord of your life. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You cannot save this carnal mind. You got saved, that old carnal mind wasn't saved. That's why it has to be renewed. So then they that are in the flesh, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't please God when you're in your flesh. So you know your soul is sick when you decide, when you can decide to move away from the known will of God. Uh, and especially watch this when you can move away from the known will of God and just keep on moving away from the known will of God. Sometimes temptation gets the best of us and we fall. But babe, you're not supposed to be falling every day. <sighs> I just wanted that to marinate because somebody needed to hear it. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now pay attention to this because a lot of y'all have read this and you haven't paid attention to it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. Watch this. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. It's not that you you don't it's not that you're in a position where you don't have knowledge because knowledge not ha, has not been presented It's that you don't have knowledge because you have rejected it. You've you've almost spiritually you put your fingers in your ears. Hey, Dr. Coons, I'm, I'm jealous of you over there in Hawaii, man, swimming with the uh, turtles and all of that. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I had to pray that jealous spirit off me, man. <laughs> and then I see. uh uh, who's it coming? Who's that coming with you over there? Uh, Smalley, Mike Smalley. He's he's on. He's there. He just got there with you today. Number two, signs that your soul is dysfunctional when you decide to move away from the known will of God. When you can easily move away from the known will of God. Number two, here we go. When you are consumed with someone that does not agree with you, you're consumed with them. They hurt you. They don't agree with you. It does not doesn't agree with, doesn't agree with your spirit. They've even proven that they 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 every chance they get, uh, they will you know injure you, do you harm, and yet you consume with them. How many times? How many times do I have to have these conversations with y'all who tell me about how a man slept with everybody in the neighborhood, took all your money, cussed you out, embarrassed you on social media, and then you sit there and tell me, but I love him. You know you're sick, don't you? You mean to tell me you're so consumed with somebody that does not even like you apparently that you can't let them go even out when somebody who was it my angelo when somebody tells you who they are believe them why does a man have to cheat on you 25 times for you to realize this brother is a cheater <laughs> how many times is it gonna have to happen honey he ain't fail he ain't make no mistake 25 times But your soul is sick. Your soul is dysfunctional. So dysfunctional that you take a person that doesn't even like you. You take your enemy and you're consumed with them. You don't want nobody else. A good man can show up and knock on your door, sent straight from heaven, and you slam the door in his face because you want your devil. You just love your devil. You're somebody's horns. You love to polish his horns at night while he sleeps. Mm -hmm. See, soul ties become addictive relationships. Soul ties become addictive relationships. And that's why, you know, um, 
many times you you holding on you're addicted you're addicted to this person you know that your soul is sick when you continue to return to a person that has done nothing but harm you see now one time you know okay let's let's work it out two times you're pushing it three times even in baseball bay three strikes you out how many times a person got to keep on showing you who they are before you accept the fact that this is just who this dude or this woman is? Because it goes both ways. Why are you consumed with somebody that doesn't even consider you? You're consumed with someone that doesn't even consider you. You're giving your heart to someone that doesn't even consider your feelings. And you're sitting here on this scope tonight trying to figure out. Look what, look what Proverbs 26 and 11 says. As a dog returneth to his vomit. This is nasty, but it's in the book. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. When you keep on going back to uh, somebody, you so consumed with somebody that is constantly abusing you and doing you wrong, and you keep going back, you are foolish. And you know what foolish is? A fool is a person that declares there is no God. And sometimes you don't say it with your mouth. You say it by your actions. It is not God that is guiding your life, sending you back into a situation that is obviously toxic. That would be the same as me drinking some poison mistakenly the first time, going to the hospital, getting my stomach pumped, come back the same night and drink the same thing again. In my book, The Father and Daughter Talk, if you have it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't have it, uh, in, there's a section in there where I talk about how men, unscrupulous men, intentionally become the emotional addiction of women who don't know better. He, in, he creates an intentional soul tied to you. You're tied to him, but he really ain't tied to you, not emotionally. But he puts you exactly where he wants you. Watch this. In 2 Corinthians 6.14. Now check this out. Check this out. Watch this now. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now we usually read that. All we're talking about many times is, is marriage. You know we're talking about marriage. But this, this has. You can be unequally yoked with friends. You know, you can be unequally yoked uh, with, with all, all kinds of you can, all kinds of relationships can be unequally yoked. But now here's 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 what I want you to get out of this. How do you know a, a, a relationship is unequally yoked? A relationship is unequally yoked when it hurts. When a relationship hurts, you know that it is an unequally yoked relationship. What is the. What is the what is the visual there? The visual of a yoke is the thing that goes across the neck of one beast and then it's supposed to go to the neck of a similar comparable beast in size and in, in um, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Species. Uh, you don't you don't take a you don't take a, a stallion and yoke a stallion to a donkey. The donkey is too short. The stride is too too you know, the gait is too short. And when they try to move together, they're so they're so out of balance that you're probably going to break both of their necks because the yoke is uneven, is unequal. You know that a relationship is unequal when the relationship hurts. Relationships were not designed to hurt. When a relationship is constantly hurting you to be in, it's an unequal yoke. Number three. Uh, signs that your soul is dysfunctional when you just when you can just decide to move away from the known will of God choose to do so when you are consumed with someone that doesn't even agree with you like drinking poison but you love it number three uh, when you get what you desired but you're always miserable one of the greatest signs of, of, of a dysfunctional soul and even a soul tie is misery Misery. 
when you when your soul is sick and when you're tied to somebody that is ungodly, though in one part of you you have what you wanted and desired, you're sick, you're miserable. All right. I don't know. A sick soul is a soul that constantly pursues the very thing that hurts it. Misery. Hebrews 11.25 says, watch this. Choosing rather, talking about, uh, I forget the context, but I think of Moses. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That's why you, you make the connection because sin is pleasurable for a season, but it runs out. See, all of this illicit and ungodly sex that you're enjoying with this person and all of that kind of stuff, um, that's not going to last. You will get what you want, but you lose what you need. I pause because I want y'all to think about it. In the, in, in the Old Testament, there's a term, a Hebrew term called selah, which means pause and think about it. Selah. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you needed. You got, you got, you got this little ungodly man or this little ungodly woman, but you lost your joy. You lost your anointing. You sacrificed even your anointing. You've compromised the calling on your life. And now you're miserable. And then you see the sad thing about it is that you can you can fall for this soul tie thing and try to push these relationships that are not ordained of God. Uh, you know, try to push them into some pseudo destiny. But you know what's going to happen when you wake up one day and realize what you actually gave up for for nothing is that you're going to have a sense of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, for lack of, for lack of that term, disdain, resentment. That was the word I was looking for. You're going to look at that person and you're going to resent them when you grow up and realize what the sickness of your soul, the dysfunction of your soul puts you into and what it costs you. What happens when you are married to an ungodly person? You gotta live. You gotta live a sanctified life in front of them. Pray for them. Put some oil on that joker. Cast them demons out of them at night or whatever. You know what I mean? Get some counseling. I will say that to you. That's what I will say to you publicly. Get some counseling. If 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 they don't want to go, you need it for yourself when you're in a situation like that. All right, number four, and I'm out. Signs of a dysfunctional soul what did i say number one was uh when you decide to move when you make a choice to move away from the normal will of god you know that your soul is sick when you're consumed with someone that doesn't even consider you you know your soul is sick uh when you when you you get what you desire but you're miserable in the long run your soul is sick and then number four you forsake and hurt people who have been loyal to you soul ties will always, or quite often should I say, end in you betraying the people who have been the most loyal to you. You mess around and you get a soul tie with somebody and you break the heart of a man that loved you with all of his heart. You go out there and you, 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 know, you let one of these little women pump you up and you go sleep with one of these women and you get all hooked up with this sexual soul tie and lose your wife and your, and your family. A woman that was faithful and loyal to you. Maybe she went through a season where she maybe had some medical problems and couldn't be in the marital way as much as you wanted to. And you let the devil pull you out there. And now you've betrayed the very person that has laid a foundation for your whole life. It happens in church all the time. People come in church and they drain the pastor, drain him of everything. Spiritually, financially, emotionally, they just drain him. And then they get hooked up with some demonic person that causes them to betray their very past, their very own pastor. You don't even know why they're gone. They gone. Just, just betrayal. Just, just, you know, just, just 
just just knives, just knives. You got to have a great pain tolerance to be a pastor. But 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 you forsake and hurt the people who've been loyal to you. Some of y'all right now got got soul ties, you know, into in you entertaining soul ties, and you having thoughts now of how you can betray somebody that's been loyal to you. That's what it does. An ungodly soul tie will cause the individual to become so confused they will betray the people who are most loyal to them. Luke 22, 47 through 48, uh, Jesus here is talking to Judas. And look what he says. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? You going to do it like this? But you see, the thing you got to, when you read the full context, <laughs> Remember in one of our scopes, we talked about how you make vows and vows create soul ties. Well, Judas went and he made he made a, a covenant with Jesus's Jesus's enemies. So he developed a soul tie there. And and, and it, it so confused him that Judas betrayed the son of God. Soul ties can turn you into a traitor. See, now watch this. Let me add this and then I'm, I'm almost out. That's where there is validity to this thing called emotional cheating. Well, I ain't slept with nobody. No, no, but see, even being on the phone with people talking stuff you ain't got no business is developing a soul tie. And don't you think the devil's going to let it stop at talking on the phone? The devil's going to push it to the next level and you're going to find yourself betraying the very person that has been the most loyal to you. All right. Uh, and watch this and I'm done. Psalm 41 and 9 says, Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. The internet is a hotbed for betrayal. So I try to use it for these purposes. I remember the time though. Thank God for deliverance. The Lord saved me right on time. Because it would have been a mess on this Facebook. You hear me what I tell you? Or whatever this, well not Periscope because everybody can see you. Facebook you can hide a little bit. But signs of a dysfunctional soul. I'm certain that we can add a lot more to this, but those are the four things that I wanted to share with you tonight. And um, we'll see where we're going to go Tuesday night. But I want you all to know I love you. Now, let me ask you, how many of you all are on with me for the first time tonight? Marquita, thank you, honey. Marquita Collins, thank you, honey. Such, such a, such a wonderful, supportive spirit. I just love you. She's not interested in Christ. How do I break away from her without being mean? Well, babe, sometimes you got to be mean. In fact, you don't have to be mean. You just got to be honest and let folk categorize it however they want. They want to call it mean and let it be mean. But, you know,